Uh, it's Sean here, and we've got a topic. It's going to be a complete pain to discuss because people are all over the board on this subject. And today's subject is toughness. We're going to be talking about toughness. And I feel like here in uh, Western culture, there's a huge emphasis placed on toughness on a knife. A knife has got to be tough. So much so that when manufacturers make knives, they make knives with horrible cutting geometries and ship them out. Because people place such a heavy reliance on toughness, ability for the knife not to chip, and use knives for inappropriate things that a really, really sharp, good cutting knife just simply can't handle because there's just a limit for steel, okay? There's just a limit for it. Just like how guns have their limits and stuff you see on Hollywood doesn't add up to what you can do in real life. It's the same way with knives. So with this huge emphasis on toughness, if a maker wants to make an incredibly tough knife, what they're doing is they're just putting out just incredibly obtuse geometries and they send it out and yeah, it's never going to chip, but it's also never going to cut anything. Okay, it's completely horrible. So with toughness, toughness is kind of an inverse uh, relationship with strength. So toughness is kind of how malleable something is. There's a few different definitions for it, but kind of how malleable the uh, apex is at your edge, you know, if it's able to deform, but then be moved back, you know, it's considered fairly tough. Now, strength is edge holding, okay? Toughness often gets confused for edge holding, but it, it, it can also be edge holding. That's why this gets kind of confusing. So, strength is basically the knife's edge ability for it to resist the deformation, okay? So, it has great strength. So great strength is great edge holding. Now then, toughness can also be considered something's ability to resist uh, chipping or further damage once it's already been cracked. Okay, so there's a few different definitions for toughness if you look at some, uh, if you just type in toughness and look it up. So we have a few knives here to kind of talk about. This is a more carbon. Here we got a Becker 1095, and then we've got a Bark River in A2, and then a Puko in 52100. Not quite the fairest examples because we have uh, some alloying content inside these steels versus these steels are pretty plain, just simple carbon, manganese, and iron. Uh, these have a little bit more ingredients as well as more carbon, but they're just at a higher hardness, okay, higher hardness. So they should be theoretically less tough, right? Not necessarily these knives right here are just too soft, it seems. They really seem to be uh, catering to a crowd that seem to find... Uh, malleable steel, steel that's been under hardened to the point when, when you're cutting stuff, the edge rolls as you cut stuff uh, at a high sharpness, which is very disappointing to me. But for a lot of people, they consider that a highlight, a uh, performance increaser, because that means that you're, you're holding your edge, it's not chipping, it's incredibly tough. Well, the thing about a knife is, a knife is not pure toughness, and a knife is not pure strength, and these aren't pure strength at all. So, all knives, when considered uh, toughness, they also have strength, okay? Because toughness and strength kind of intersect, okay? They come at like this. So we want to find knives that have good amounts of strength, or excuse me, toughness and good amounts of strength, okay? We want to find that intersecting line between the two, and that's really what's going to give you the best edge holding between the two is by having a mixture of toughness and strength. So that's why it's tough to really apply the pure definitions of toughness to knives because every knife is a mixture of toughness and strength. You want something that holds that shape, okay, that doesn't roll or chip. That's, that's due to strength, yet is tough enough. The toughness comes from when it's damaged, it doesn't chip out. So finding that balance has some to do with geometry, but a lot to do with heat treatment. And once you get your heat treatment nailed, it also has something to do with the underlying alloying of the steel itself. So that's kind of my basic take on toughness. Uh, we can talk more in depth about it, but there is a limit even to my understanding of it. I mean, there's, I don't know exactly the exact mechanisms of how the alloys in the steel prevent the deformation and the kind of the, uh, the dynamics of how it's operating uh, inside the steel with the matrix is beyond my knowledge. But uh, I'd gladly like to discuss this further in other videos about toughness. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Take care.